Shipyard is a modern data orchestration platform designed to help data teams launch, monitor, and share error-free data workflows like a 10x engineer. In today's demo, we're going to show you how you can connect Fivetran connector syncs to other internal tools and processes. Normally, you would have to rely on scheduling-based workflows that hope the data has finished loading by a specific time. If errors occur or things take longer than normal, your workflows might run with incomplete data. With Shipyard, you can connect the output of everything together to ensure that data gets delivered as fast and as accurately as possible. For this example, we're going to show the flow of delivering Stripe customer data to Slack. When you first log into Shipyard, you'll see an overview of all the projects you have access to and the high-level status of the jobs or vessels in that project. What I'm showing you is under the Shipyard Demos organization, which every user should have access to. We set up a project called Fivetrain Workflow that we're going to build in for this demo. Clicking into this project, we're first going to start by creating a new vessel using some blueprints or templates from our blueprint library. We have well over 60 blueprints that perform common functions against tools in your data stack in a low-code fashion. These common functions are typically things like downloading data, uploading data, executing queries, and sending messages. We have blueprints for all the major data tools you currently use, like dbt, Snowflake, BigQuery, S3, Google Drive, and more. I'm going to search for Fivetran. While we do want to execute a sync, we first need to update the connector to run on a manual schedule, controlled by Shipyard, instead of an automatic schedule, so that we don't have any conflicts. To update a Fivetran connector, we need to provide credentials and a connector ID. So I'm going to go into Fivetran, click the connector I want, go to the Setup tab, and copy the connector ID. You can currently see sync frequency is happening on an automated schedule. Flipping back to Shipyard, let's add in our connector ID. We want to change our schedule type to manual, and we don't want to make changes to anything else, so we'll go ahead and click next step. First, we're going to name our vessel. Next, we're able to adjust our notifications. By default, Shipyard automatically sends error alerts to your own email, but you can send these alerts to others as well. Finally, you can adjust your vessel's guardrails. These aim to prevent errors from ever occurring. Shipyard can automatically retry vessels if something goes wrong, like a temporary connection issue. You can adjust the time that Shipyard takes between each retry, and you can also specify how long Shipyard should wait before cutting the vessel off and trying again. Now that we're done, we'll click Save and Finish. Now we can run our vessel. This immediately redirects us to a vessel's log where you can see live output as it runs. As soon as it finishes, the page will refresh to show a final status of success. The output will show all of the variables that we filled out while hiding any credentials. You can see that the connector was updated and the only change was setting a manual schedule. If we go back to our Fivetran dashboard and we refresh the page, we can see that it now says the replication schedule is currently controlled by the Fivetran API. Since all of our low-code blueprints only involve providing the right inputs, as we already demonstrated by updating the Fivetran connector schedule, we're skipping through the blueprint setup for executing a sync on Fivetran, downloading data from BigQuery, and sending that data to Slack. Now that we've made three independent vessels, we want them to work together as part of a fleet or a workflow. Let's go to the Fleet tab and click on the option to add a new fleet. You can build a fleet by dragging and dropping vessels together visually. All you have to do is click on the canvas and select vessels that you've previously set up. First, we want to sync the Stripe connector. Once that's finished, we want to download our Stripe customer data from BigQuery. Then, we want to Slack those customers to our accounting team. Whenever you run a fleet, any data that is generated or downloaded is always available to downstream vessels for that particular run. It works just like your local file system. So in this case, we created a file called customers.csv in our second vessel, and we're passing it down to our third vessel that then slacks that information. When the entire fleet finishes running, the data is automatically wiped from our system and is no longer available. This process helps keep your data extra secure. Now that our fleet looks like we want it to, we'll click Next Step, give our fleet a name, and click Save and Finish. Let's go ahead and run our fleet. You'll be immediately redirected to a log that starts showing a live streaming Gantt chart that indicates the progress and timing of each step. It looks like our Stripe data just started syncing. If we go to our Fivetran dashboard, we're able to see on the Status tab that it's currently syncing the data. Great! If we go back to Shipyard and click on the individual vessel, we can see its live output. Skipping ahead, you can see that the vessel finished running, refreshing every 30 seconds to see if the connector had finished successfully. If we go back to Fivetran and refresh, we should see that the sync finished successfully. Heading back to Shipyard, we can now see the rest of the steps start to run. You can see that the customer data now downloaded from BigQuery. By clicking on the graph, you can see the output of that vessel. 
The final step is sending a Slack message. You can see here that when I pull up our accounting channel, it says, hey Blake, here are our customers. And then it has a button that I can click to automatically download that file. So in just a few minutes, we've set up a process that automatically sends customer information as soon as Fivetran finishes syncing Stripe data. No more waiting around and hoping that the timing is right. We walked through a lot of different examples of how you could use our low-code blueprints, but we didn't walk through how you can use vessels to run your own code. Let's say you have a Python script that you want to use that anonymizes data before it actually gets sent to the accounting team. First, we'll need to create a new vessel with code. Then, we select the language that we want to use. Shipyard natively supports Python, Node, and Bash, which can run any language like Golang, Ruby, or Java. We'll just select Python for now. You can provide your code in three different ways. You can write it or copy and paste it here. You can upload the files directly, or you can sync your code from GitHub. This is the preferred method since it integrates with existing development flows. We have a GitHub repository set up here called Anonymize Data. The script it contains takes in a file, the columns you want to anonymize, and the output you want to deliver. Each of these parameters can be defined with environment variables. It then uses these inputs to generate fake data so that nobody will see the actual data that's being passed through. Flipping back to Shipyard, we can select the repo that we want to connect to. Then we can select the branch or tag that we want to clone whenever the vessel runs. I just want to source the code directly from the main branch, and then I want to unpack it into the current working directory. The script that I am trying to run is named anonymize.py. Now we're ready for the next step. On the left side, you can set environment variables. You can provide any values that you want to send to the script at runtime. So you could override the defaults that are used in our script right now, but we're not going to. For this script to work, we need to install a few packages, pandas and faker. You can specify the version if you'd like to, using the same nomenclature that you would use in a requirements.txt file. By leaving it blank, you'll install the latest version of that package. By default, when a vessel runs, Shipyard automatically containerizes it and ensures that it runs in isolation. So the packages in this vessel will never conflict with the packages in any other vessel that are used in a fleet. Because this vessel is pulling directly from GitHub, you could also keep a requirements.txt file in the GitHub repository, which Shipyard would automatically pull in and install the listed packages. We're ready to go to the next step where we'll name the vessel and click save and finish. The next step is to add this vessel to the existing fleet that we just built. We'll go to the fleets tab, click on our fleet name, and go to the fleet builder tab. Before we select the customer's file to accounting, we want to anonymize the data. Let's add in the anonymized data vessel, drag the arrows between these vessels, and get rid of the existing pathway. Then click Save. Now, whenever the data is returned, it will be anonymized first and then sent via Slack. Let's see how that pans out. While this fleet is running in the background, I want to show you how you can run things on automatic triggers. Every vessel in fleet has three options for triggers. You can always trigger things on demand, like we've been doing, but you can also set up multiple schedules to run hourly, daily, weekly, or monthly. And with each of these options, you can choose the exact timing that things will run up to the five minute mark. The last option is to trigger things using a webhook. You can always run a post request against the generated URL to automatically start the fleet or vessel. This allows you to connect Shipyard to other external tools like Zapier or Lambda functions for event-driven workflows. Let's go ahead and save these triggers. By navigating back to the Logs tab and refreshing, we can now see all of the upcoming schedules for the next 24 hours. Now that the fleet has finished, we can see in Slack that the customer's file was sent again. If I go ahead and download that file, we can open it up this time because it no longer has sensitive data in it. You can see that it created a file with random company names and emails. Going back to Shipyard, because we built our code vessel using GitHub, when you click into the log, you can see the exact git commit hash that was used whenever the repository was cloned. This gives you even more control over seeing what version of code ran at any given point in time. So that was an easy way to incorporate a custom Python script that installed external packages to transform data in a way that made it more secure before it reached individuals at the company. Shipyard makes it really easy to create solutions like this with a mix of low-code templates and your own code. While there's many powerful features we didn't get to cover, like creating your own blueprint from code or building complex workflows with multiple vessels running simultaneously, we hope this gives you an idea of how quickly you can orchestrate your data with Shipyard. It's now easier than ever to connect the results of your five transyncs to other parts of your data operations. You can get started with Shipyard today with a free 14-day trial.